Willow Creek Springs presents Healthy Living with your host, Joe Grumbine. All right. Well, thank you for joining us. And I would like to welcome you all to the Healthy Living Podcast. And it's brought to you by Willow Creek Springs. And I'm excited to share another adventure with Aaron Wilkins, who has been uh, featured numerous times previously. And Aaron, welcome to the show. How are you doing today? Thank you. Doing well. I haven't been blown away in our wind here in Idaho today, so it's a good day. Uh, the weather has been crazy across the country. We're we're in our 12th atmospheric river storm coming through, and we were forecasted to be year four of a drought, and instead we got more rain than we've had in 100 years. So um, who knows? Yeah. What's um, well, it's good that you're here. You seem to be in a in a warm, safe place, so that's a that's a good good key. And uh, like to kind of go back a little bit to the last conversation we had. We were talking about uh, allergies, and we were talking about you know really what we were talking about was causes, right? Mm -hmm. We were talking you know when somebody comes to your clinic and they say they have a problem, and you know probably somebody comes up with like say a rash or some bumps, a hive or something, you have to start thinking, whoa, something caused that, right? And um, last week we talked about, you know, foods and um, <clears throat> maybe external allergies to plants and pollens or whatnot and, and, and how you tested for that. And we got pretty deep into the woods with it and, and, and mm -hmm. sort of, uh, identifying markers that are are commonly uh people are sensitive to and 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 scaling back and trying to create a baseline um but that's not all there is is it nope so why don't you um you know i mean you know we're complicated creatures as humans and we have minds and we have bodies and we have spirits and i think two out of the three of those get neglected a lot and yet they're probably the most causal elements of our of our being. So um, probably you start suspecting that maybe there's more to it than too much milk in your diet, huh? Oh, definitely. Yeah. And that's my kind of my motto. First thing I say on my website is, you know, we're mind, body, soul, and spirit, and you can't neglect, you know, choose one and neglect the others. They're all interconnected. Um, so that's a huge thing, especially this week that I've been working on, um, is people with trauma and not wanting to go the traditional, you know, medication or counselor route. So when you talk about trauma, that's a big word and it's a huge word. It's, it's, a, you know, it's, it's something that there is not a human being alive that has not undergone trauma. I mean, you pretty much, you enter this world in a traumatic way, right? <laughs> I mean, oh, yeah. what could yeah. be more traumatic for both parties than than birth? And then you leave this world yeah. in a somewhat traumatic way, generally speaking. So, um, and all the way along, it's a fairly traumatic experience. Mm -hmm. So um, this, this presence or this element is kind of, I don't know, it's a force, really. Trauma is a force of nature, I would think. You know, oh, yeah. it's, it's gravity yeah. or, or, you know, fluid dynamics, there's trauma. <laughs> yep. So what do you do? Yep. With that? How do you, how do you, uh, how do you figure where it all fits? Yeah, I guess when people do come to me for that, I've had a number reaching out for their children in particular who are having trouble coping that have had some sort of trauma, whether it be just trouble coping or, whether it be, you know, actual physical or sexual abuse that's occurred. Um, I usually start with um, a soul healing. Um, so I do soul fragment healing, which is kind of a, a rare thing. I don't really know of anybody that's doing it. <laughs> so, I haven't even really um, heard that term before talking to you. I mean, I've worked with a lot of different people with a lot of different modalities, but why don't you tell us a little bit about what that is? 
Yes. Yeah, so, I mean, psychologists will call it the child within your, you know, you're taught that there's a part of you, this little person that never gets healed. So it kind of follows along those lines, but whenever there's something that you have perceived as trauma, I mean, it could have been, it could have been horrific, like your dad beating you, or it could have been a loss of a pet, or it could have just been a move that was super disturbing to you at a younger age. So all of these things that so each person, it's very individual. Um, so I go in energetically and we all have a soul room kind of centered in our heart chakra where it's your identity. It's like the identity and that purpose piece of you. And if there's ever been parts of you that have been hurt, there's almost this, I don't know who I am. I don't know how to become who I am. I don't know what my purpose is. And a lot of that is just healing and creating more whole person so that they can embrace their identity and their giftings and talents that they're called to use, you know, to benefit, hopefully to benefit society while they're here on the earth. Um, but it's kind of taken to that place. Wow. That's, that's, that's a lot to wrap my head around, but it, it makes sense. So in, in some way you're saying, you know, we're kind of born whole. And as we, as we mature, we have that, um, that who we are and, and we discover it as we're going right you know but but there's that thing like you know i at 57 or be 57 real soon i am still the same person i was when i was 10 yeah in, in some ways like the things that inspire me and the things that make me smile or or the things that i'm afraid of they're still the same things even mm -hmm. if I've dealt with them or had lots of experience, there's still a piece of me, a, what I would consider the real me. And so what you're saying is that a trauma can sort of put walls between us and that and, and, and maybe create a maze where we kind of don't know how to get back to it. Yeah, yeah. And I, I mean, for instance, I did a soul room reading on a gal last week. And we were dealing with a fragment from when she was five years old. And um, I said, did you move? It feels like this, this part of you is traumatized from a move. And come to find out, she was, she's from another country and she was not wanted by her parents. She was abandoned. She wasn't oh, fed. Man. She was very neglected. So she was shipped over to the States to live with her great um, aunt and uncle. And um, so that had created this whole piece of, I don't know who I am. I don't know where I'm going and I don't know what I'm meant to do. And so we've done, she has three fragments. We've done one of the three so far. And she said just after that one episode of letting that fragment integrate back her, um, she said she's starting to feel herself more, understand herself more, be able to control her emotions a little bit better. Um, so it's kind of started her on this path of self-discovery, which is wow. really awesome. Wow. So it almost sounds to me like you would have to be extremely intuitive or empathic to be able to even do this. I mean, it's not like a um, it's not like a tarot card reading or a um, a biorhythm feed feedback thing or I mean it's not like like you can't plug somebody into the scope and and and, <laughs> and, and look at them right so there's no. you're you're talking to them it's not even really hypnosis is it no not at all yeah at the phone I can do it in person some people prefer it over the phone just because you know we're dealing with sensitive issues um but it's, and it's hard to explain because I know how strange it can sound to other people, but it's, I just look beyond the physical and I look into the energetic spiritual soul sense and I just see it. I see the room, I see what's going on in there. Um, and then I draw it for them. I'm not an artist, but I'll put, you know, little X's for each little thing I'm seeing or what the room looks like or, um, and it's, I mean, I've been doing this now for 13 years and I feel that like, I always get feedback from people and no one's ever said, oh my gosh, you know, this isn't working or you don't know what you're talking about, you know? And so wow. that's, been, 
good confirmation that, you know, cause sometimes I'm like, I don't even know how I'm doing it. I'm just doing it. Wow. So how did you come about? I mean, you know, you say you've been doing this for 13 years. What, uh -huh. how did you figure this out? Like, I mean, it's not a thing that I don't think most people come along and go, I know I'm going to go find some soul rooms. <laughs> Yeah, and there's, a, I mean, there's a few books, uh, there's a book called The Throne of the Soul, and there's a few little things that talk about it, but it's, it's hard to, to find anything. Um, even energy healers will say, oh, I sense, you know, you got trauma when you're seven or whatever, they don't necessarily address it. Um, so yeah, it was 13 years ago, um, I was meditating, and I went to this room. And it was right in the center of me. And I went in and there was 32 fragments, Whoa. one for each year of my life. At that point. And um, it was this sense of and it, each person's room looks so different because it's you. It's, it's what you've created. And so I went into this room and I'm very organized and I'd arranged all my little fragments in this little square spiral um, tied them to chairs and gagged I mean, them. Um, so see mine. I, I have a little bit different <laughs> structure, I think. <laughs> There's a lot of people that are scared. They're like, oh my gosh, I don't know what you'll see. Um, but yeah, and so there was a hole in the, in the middle of the room. And each year it was like I was building a new fragment of myself. There was this little workshop off to the side. And I was told, if you don't deal with this, you're going to lose your first fragment. And so I panicked because I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't want my fragment to fall down the hole that I put in the middle of my soul room. And so I just went calling people and, you know, ended up working with um, a counselor who had never really, he didn't really know a lot about it either, but he had done a lot of work with, with people with multiple personality disorders coming out of satanic cults. So we had dealt wow. with a lot of like split personality stuff, but this wasn't a split personality, so it was very different to kind of go through, but yeah. Yeah, it seems almost like that was kind of the first thing that I, that went into my mind was, you know, multiple personality, but then it's like, no, nah, that doesn't really seem like, uh -uh. it's just different elements of you. It's not, yeah. it's not separate. It's just different points of view or different, different angles. Yep. Wow. So with trauma, you know, trauma is such a subjective thing, right? Like yep. two or three or four or 10 people could go through the same experience. And, and even like, you know, identical triplets could go all, all be raised by the same parents and yep. uh, be treated identically the same as the, the nurture side of it. Right. And, and, given the same food, the same treatment, and yet one of them might have found a situation very traumatic where the other one might have had fun with it. Uh -huh. So what, I mean, so it almost seems like maybe the, 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 the clues to that might be in these rooms. Yeah, because I mean, I think you know, if you go to a counselor and you're just like, oh my gosh, I've had trauma because my mom always made roast beef and I hated it. And, <laughs> but for some reason that was traumatic for this person, right. you know, they're not going to do anything in that right. counseling session. They're going to be like, well, okay, I guess you've got some stress here, have some medication, <laughs> you know? Right. And, um, it is, it's so, you don't have to be punched in the face to have trauma, you know, it's all around yeah. us. It could be someone looking at you funny. It could be, you know, anything. Um, I think so, even yeah. fear of the unknown is very traumatic. Oh, yeah. like, you know, people, they say that um, uh, speaking in public is a thing that is more traumatic to most people than you know having a tooth pulled or I mean you know I mean obviously being a little bit extreme there but I mean it's 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 a th it's a thing and, yeah. and confronting uh an uncomfortable situation or an unknown situation for a lot of people that it's it's almost like you know what we're missing in life is a class on on going somewhere you've never been, like a class on doing something you've never done, a class on the unknown, 
that says yeah. okay, right, life is going to be full of these things if you can figure out how to walk into this thing and you don't have any idea what's going to happen you're going to be all right like i think people that were self-starters like you know i moved out when i was still a kid you know and i i just said screw it i'm going after it and i was scared to death but i didn't care i was gonna I wasn't going to yeah. deal with what I was dealing with. I didn't want to, and I'd rather deal with the fear than than that. And because of that, now I go exploring wherever I go and doing whatever, because that unknown thing to me is exciting rather than scary. However, I know a lot of people that, you know, don't ever want to go outside of their comfort zone. They don't want ever want to, you know, do a new thing. And, and um, I can't help but imagine that a lot of traumas kind of boil down to, um, not having an experience or 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 dealing with something yeah there's a a sense of dissociation a lot of times that accompanies that trauma where there's just a piece of you that you just kind of compress and stick away and be like i'm not dealing with this this hurts and so but you know over time the more and more time that goes by and you don't deal with the hurt or you don't deal with that emotional piece of you um you're suppressing that and that causes a lot of you know dissociation or inability to get out and you know explore new things <laughs> sorry you're getting walked on here <laughs> no no it's all good it looks like you're getting a treatment there <laughs> oh yeah getting some massage work going you know? <laughs> so it's it it seems like you've got you've got experiences or traumas and then you have how you deal with them or not and uh -huh. and so both of those situations could be you know part of these soul rooms right i mean you got oh, yeah. you got the person who had a, a an abusive father maybe the father you know yelled at them or told them they were terrible or told them they were worthless or whatever which to me is probably more damaging than getting struck you know oh, yeah. because it it, it 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 strikes your spirit you know Mm -hmm. And uh, you can't you can't get a callus to that, really, you know, yep. especially if it's somebody who you love and care about and respect doing it to you. It's like, you know, it's yeah. crushing. but yet it happens all the time, you know. Mm -hmm. And so some people bury it away. Like I would think maybe and again, I'm guessing because I I'm definitely don't have those skills that you have. I have different skills, but not that one. But the logical side of me would say, you know, a physical trauma would be something that you might totally suppress because you you can only remember so much pain like your body has. Like if you get in a very traumatic injury, you it doesn't really hurt when it's happening because your body mm -hmm. says, no, nah, I'm not going to deal with this right now. <laughs> and it blocks yep. it up and you don't feel it. You know, I've been in traumatic injuries and I was like, whoa. I mean, I felt it, but it wasn't like you expect this searing, burning, horrible pain. And, you know, it aches like hell while you're getting better from it. But the actual injury wasn't that painful, it didn't seem. And and so, yep. um, but then the emotional stuff, you know, it's like you have to deal with it because it's crushing you. Like you can't just ignore it. Mm -hmm. And so you probably have to find some way of, 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 of getting away from it or or confronting it or whatever yeah but those two things are so different right i mean you know you could create a habit or a, a a coping mechanism um that may be useful or maybe very unhealthy for dealing with certain situations is that kind of some of the stuff you're uncovering yeah we had a um i did a different soul room work I've been working with this lady every week for um a couple months now and she I said okay you got a 16 year old in there something happened and oh I don't know nothing happened at 16 I I <laughs> whatever and I was like okay then let's just stop and yeah. like let this let your 16 year old <laughs> you know just like remind you of things and so we're right. just still for a while yeah. sometimes you'll see things that or remember things or um even sometimes i've had the fragments talk um really? which can freak people out a little yeah um, but they just want to be heard um and so yeah then all of a sudden 
whoosh, all this stuff came out about, oh, well, yeah, I started messing with the Ouija board when I was 16. And then my brother was abusive to me. And it just like kept going and going. And it was something that she hadn't thought about, didn't think anything happened at that age. Wow. Um, And it was huge. It was so huge. And it was tied into her ability to accept herself because she kept saying to me, well, just make her go away. Just tell her to shut up and get out of me. And I'm like, whoa, this is you. (laughs) (laughs) So for the next week, I kept telling her, you need to love yourself. You need to embrace yourself. You need to be kind to yourself. Um, And so she's been working on that this week of just loving and embracing that part of her until it integrates. So it's pretty cool to watch. That's kind of powerful. It's like, um, you know, the, 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 the commandment, you know, love, love your neighbor as yourself. Right. But there's so much power in that because Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people don't love themselves the way they ought to. And Mm -hmm. so they go around loving their neighbors like they love themselves, but it's not so good sometimes. (laughs) No. And uh, I, I, I think there's something about acceptance of of our i don't know uh our our shortcomings you know we're all human right unless you can float away and walk to the wall you're 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 on the same plane as i am we got problems we all got problems and and you know they're they're all shapes and sizes and 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 we recognize some of them some we don't but it's about the accepting of them. I think that is, that's, it's like our attitude. We have a choice of what we accept and what we don't. And even if it's hard, you can say, well, all right, I don't like that. I think it's horrible, but, but it is. And it's me and I can't go back and undo that. So I can only either accept it or not. Right. Mm-hmm. And that becomes, yeah, there is- Go ahead. Sorry. No, I was just going to say that becomes one of the powers that we actually have. Yeah. Yeah. And I think there's that, there's that kind of two-sided coin of the inability to accept when things happen, but then the knowledge also that you have the power to change it, you know, you're not stuck in that place. Um, And that's where people get bogged down. You know, I can't accept what happened. I hate this about me. I hate this about my life. And then they just stay there right. and it's not this, wait a second, but you, you know, it's not like that whole thing of this is America. You can be whatever you want. <laughs> I don't necessarily think that's true, but you do have the power to change your circumstances, <laughs> even if that's just with positive thinking, because that can change your brain and your neuronal function. Um, so that's still change in some aspect, you know? Well, that's actually a whole topic that we'll get into in a future episode because i think that that's really the key to everything on you know mm-hmm. it's it, yeah. it, it what you think about and what you how you feel about what you think about is everything like it's literally everything yeah. and it, it dictates what you are what you do what you feel what you and and as easy as that sounds it's 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 the thing that gets in all of our way you know mm-hmm. we all we all have those bad thought patterns which is what ultimately causes all of our problems yep and it's the easiest thing to solve if we would just do it (laughs) yeah yeah so i i i I think this is just um it's 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 intriguing it's i i would like to just out of curiosity like you know I feel like I'm a fairly well adapted guy, but I have issues. I mean, we all have issues. We're all human and we all have, and there's things that obviously I'm not where I want to be in life or I wouldn't be trying to do anything. Right. I, I I have ambitions of doing something and being somebody that I'm not and doing things that I haven't done. And so clearly there's something in my own way, which obviously it's me. And so you got to, I mean, knowing that's great, but, but doing something about it. Now that's another, that's another, uh, you know, another element. I think it's just like medical, uh, you know, um, I saw a thing today that was actually kind of interesting and it, it caught me thinking it was, it's something that had to do, it's, it was a, a, a phrase and it said um, something about sick care versus health care. 
and yeah. you know modern medicine western medicine drugs are mm -hmm. essentially sick care they're not health care at all you know they're yep. not there to help you be healthy they're there to treat a sickness you know and, and we put giant quotes over treat but it's kind <laughs> yeah. of the same thing with our our mind and our in our soul and our spirit and, and all of the elements that you know we can't see um you know th this is these are the same sorts of things like people generally probably don't think that they would talk to you unless they really thought there was a problem right mm -hmm. but but really the other the flip side of that was you know you would be the perfect life coach because you could get in there and help somebody get out of their own way and it wouldn't have to be you know a horrible trauma that they were getting over it could be some thing that was just they threw in their own way because they were afraid of succeeding or they were whatever I mean, you know. so i i almost would like to you know put that in our little bookmark tag as 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 we're winding out of time again which we do every time it seems like every time we talk it goes quicker yeah. and quicker but um I, I I am absolutely intrigued by this one. What would you say the most severe, um, you know, obviously not mentioning names or anything, but just the 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 scenario where somebody came to you and you were able to um, just open up or find or solve or or help a person um, in the most traumatic way? What would you say that that if you had one that you that you could share? Oh gosh, there's so many. Um, I, I deal a lot, um, with rape. And so women that have experienced rape, um, and that part is extremely traumatic. They're very scared. They don't want to remember it. Um, a lot of the techniques that I use don't cause you to have flashbacks or remember what's happened. And so we do soul room work to integrate. And then I usually combine body memory release, which is just pulling the, the memory of the rape off the cells in the body um, energetically. And so kind of combined with those two, seeing people healed from having that always there and always impacting you know any sexual relationship they ever have going forward from that one incident. So it's cool to watch the healing in that. Yeah, I would imagine that in my mind, that would probably have to be probably that's two probabilities, but more more than likely um would have to be the most traumatic thing that could happen to a person. I mean, uh fortunately I haven't dealt with that, but so many people have. I mean, as you get older and you meet women in life, it's like, geez, is there any women that haven't been sexually abused? Like every single woman I know just about I mean and that's not much of an exaggeration if you get to know mm -hmm. them and you start talking they've all been abused in some way I mean, what in the hell is wrong with us as a human as a, as a race like what yeah. is wrong that would cause that to be a norm I mean and it, it, it mm -hmm. but you know the thing that's good about being on this side of the good and evil battle that rages in 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 the universe is that it's always dynamic and regardless of what always was tomorrow could be a little different and we could be mm -hmm. part of what's changing it and it all starts with a little thing it's all chain reactions that happen you know that whole butterfly effect thing that's real like everything oh, you yeah. do affects everything in all places and continues to affect forever and mm -hmm. you'll never understand yep. it or see it or really even know what 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 it was but you know that those thoughts in your mind and the the you know the smile or the frown today it it, it reverberates throughout you know all of time and space and everything it touches all the time yeah <laughs> yep. Yep. So, well, Aaron, this was delightful, and um, I find that uh, every time we talk, I'm learning things, and I that that makes me happy. I love to learn, and and uh, um, it opens up, uh, you know, my whole thought process of, huh, I wonder, and uh, that's that's my ten year old brain that's uh, always always looking <laughs> to explore. So. Yeah. Um, once again, why don't you share with us? Uh, this is your chance for a parting shot and a uh, 
um, and, and a way to connect with folks. Why don't you tell us about how, how they can get a hold of you? Yeah, so check out my website and then feel free to send me a text, give me a call um, anytime, especially if you've got questions about anything. Always open to helping people understand and it's an honor to have people let me on their journey to healing. Fantastic. All right, Aaron Wilkins, it's been a pleasure as usual. I look forward to the next time and uh, we will see you all next time on the Healthy Living Podcast.